record of 30 minutes, 53.37. And athletes in the starters' hands for the women's Zatapec. So at the field on its journey, and we have Lauren Reed from New South Wales, Leanne Pompiani in the number three vest. We've got Sarah Waters from Deakin Athletics Club. We've got uh, Tali Hayes from South Bendigo, Caitlin Adams, South Australia, Henrietta Lawrence from Frankston Athletics Club, Andrea so Sarah Fien from Canada, lady we've been talking about, very interesting athlete coming over here. And of course, the first, second and third Australians across the line will be uh, the Australian Championship first, second and third, even though we do have a Canadian in the field. Sinead Diver from South Melbourne, Marnie Pondon from New South Wales, Jessica Trengo from South Australia, Gemma Maney from Frankston. Celia Sullohern from New South Wales, Bridie Delaney, New South Wales, Emily Breitschek from the Australian Club, Eloise Wellings, New South Wales, and Virginia Maloney from Collingwood Harriers. So as they come down the straight on the first occasion, and out in front it is Marnie Ponton, who leads from Maloney in second, and moving up into a clear third is Eloise Wellings. As they head through the first lap, target time, from what I understand, is around the 77, 79 second um, per lap pace. They've just gone through in 81, so a little bit off pace there, but they'll find they're running. They've got another 24 laps to go uh, to settle into their rhythm. Target time for some of these girls. We've got three, three girls that have already got A or B qualifiers for the upcoming Com Games, but the target times for those in the audience that are interested, the A standard required for selection at the Commonwealth Games is 32.15. Um, and the B standard 33, 13.8. Not sure about the 0.8, but anyway, that's, that must be important. Uh, so the girls are, are on track uh, to try and run those times. Not ideal conditions, although it does look uh, like the wind has settled down a little bit. Uh, the flags are limp, I might say, on the infield, which is great, which is uh, obviously very positive for some of the distance events coming on later on in the evening. Craig, a little bit uh, more welcoming though than the real muggy conditions we had 24 hours ago i'm sure the athletes are happy that they've got the conditions tonight absolutely but as a good distance runner would know it's the day before the day before that counts so you know the last 48 hours for these girls will have been spent inside hopefully in some air conditioning fueling up making sure they've had plenty to drink the electrolyte sports drinks obviously very important carbo loading maybe not as necessary for something like the 10k but i'm sure many of the girls out there on track will have been taking uh, that into account over the last 40, uh, 48 hours. Another 81 second lap there. Uh, so the pace is relatively comfortable, should be relatively comfortable for the majority of girls on track. Uh, and we would expect Eloise Wellings just sitting in fourth place there as they go past the 1500 metre start to sit in nice and relaxed for the first third of the race, I'd imagine, and then look to get the, the event rolling. So they're looking currently at about that 33.45 pace. 33.45, which is about 30 seconds or so outside the B standard. So I think they'll settle in for the first 10 laps, and then we might see some moves from the key runners, someone like an Eloise Wendlings, even a Jess Trengove. Um, we saw her on the start line. I had a quick chat with her in Adelaide earlier in the week on Monday, down at Glenelg. Uh, she's in good shape. She's fit and she's healthy, um, obviously preparing for the marathon next year as opposed to the 10K. Um, she'll be looking for a really hard hit out tonight, so I would expect at some point in the second half to see her run on if Eloise hasn't, hasn't already made the running. Well, she's an interesting athlete, uh, Jess Trengove, also competed at uh, netball uh, at a very high level and uh, has also represented Australia at two Olympic Games, London and Rio. So it is Maloney in front from Ponton in second position, so Safian from Canada in third, Wellings in fourth, and then Trengove in fifth position. And a 79 lap there, so just marginally quicker. Yeah, they'll settle into that rhythm. And they'll find it quite comfortable. I would, I would say, as I've said earlier, this is, what are we, four laps, three laps in rather. They've got 22 to go, so there's plenty of running left to happen as they make their way down the back straight. Traditionally a headwind here at Lakeside uh, in the distance running, obviously. Uh, the back straight where a lot of famous moves will be made. Not yet. Not yet, I hope, uh, but the girls are settling into a good rhythm and they'll have about another 30, 29 to 30 minutes of quality running ahead of them. 
Craig, there's plenty to uh, play for uh, tonight. Of course, uh, Commonwealth Games positions are uh, up for grabs. You had the great honour of representing our country at arguably our most uh, famous sporting cathedral, the Melbourne Cricket Ground. But uh, to do it on the Gold Coast would be pretty special too. Oh, anywhere in Australia would be pretty special. To represent your country, whether it's here in Australia or abroad, is always special. Obviously, the 2006 Games in Melbourne, um, I was living in Richmond at the time, was actually it was a fantastic event. I got to walk over from home from Stanley Street, where I was living at the time, to the MCG, or to warm up at the Olympic Park, the old Olympic Park. Don't we wish that was still here anyway? That's another story. But I uh, got to walk over there, warm up, and then onto the MCG turf in front of 100,000 people, run my 5K, fall over in my 1500, and then walk home for lasagna that mum had made me in the fridge. So oh, how that? doesn't get any better than that. And hopefully, you know, we've got a full team, a full contingent of both male and female runners across all events in our Australian track and field team to represent us on the Gold Coast um, in a few months from now. You did have some big moments at the old Olympic Park. You uh, brought the uh, stands uh, absolutely cheering their heads off for a couple of occasions during those uh, Australian events. That was when the sport was, well, was, is, still is um, at, its, at its greatest. I mean, I've got a lot of fond memories from both Olympic Park and also here at Lakeside in more recent years. Interesting uh, statement from Sasafian, just sitting third right there, early statement made as uh, they continue this steady pace. It's a 79 last lap, so they've uh, put together a couple of consistent laps and it's Maloney leading from Ponton in second, Sasafian in third and then in fourth, just off the insider's haze. As the girls make their way up to the 2K mark, We'd be looking to hit around the 6.35 to 6.40, which is the target time of 33 and a half minutes or thereabouts. So the girls have slightly picked up the pace, which is great running. 6.40 through 2K. Yep. So the first few laps completed in the women's Zadapik. Let's head down to Nick. Thanks very much, Matt. So down here we have our, final, our place getters in the Gary Honey Long Jump Challenge this evening where we had male and female jumpers paired up together in a team's competition. So in third place with a total distance of 13.29, we have Elizabeth Hedy and Nick Hum. Please acknowledge the crowd. In second place, just four centimetres further, with a total of 13.33, Henry Smith and Annalise Bush. And in first place, presenting the trophies for the Gary Honey Long Jump Challenge, our former Athletics Victoria President, Ian Jones, with a distance of 13.66, Catherine Mendez and Christopher Matreski, both of Essendon. So Wellings in fifth place, Trengove in sixth, just to keep you updated, with uh, still a long way to go around 19 laps. Diver is there as well, just on their heels in about seventh or eight. Another 81, 82 second laps, so the girls are being nice and consistent. Eloise just sitting in fifth on the rails. Trengove just trailing her just to her outside a little bit. Diver in the field, looking very strong. She's an interesting one, obviously. Sinead's been in great shape over the last couple of months. Um, with her marathon form and transitioning onto the track as well with a very strong run here at Lakeside a few weeks ago. So expect to see her position herself nicely in the first half, be nice and relaxed and then be very, very competitive, I would imagine, trying to knock up a couple of scalps in the second half. A little bit of movement uh, off the back uh, straight there. Trend Gove just improving her position, if anything, on the outside. Hayes just happy to get the run behind her. Sullahern is up there as well. And also Diver, just uh, covering a little bit of extra territory on the outside, just uh, running with plenty of room, plenty of air there on the outside in about 7th or 8th, as you mentioned, Craig. An interesting uh, runner, competed in the Marathon World Championships 2015-2017 after moving to Australia in 2002 from a small town in County Mayo in Ireland. But the leader is Virginia Maloney with 18 laps to go. Another 79 second lap there, very consistent, like clockwork actually. Uh, Emily Brikicek we haven't touched on. She's a bit of a blast from the yeah. past actually. I remember travelling around the world with Emily Brikicek and her better half, James Nipperis. Uh, this is her comeback event 
uh, over 10k. So she's stepping up in distance, uh, more commonly known as the, the middle, so the 15 through to 5, uh, obviously staking her claim for selection for the upcoming Com Games over the 10, which is fantastic to see her back in great shape and obviously looking nice and relaxed early. Uh, we're going to throw back to Gary Honey. We're going to head down, uh, yes, uh, Craig, as you touched on there, uh, we're going to head down to uh, Nick, uh, who's going to talk about uh, the winner of the Gary Honey competition that was conducted earlier on. Thanks very much, Matt. So, Chris, um, Catherine, we had a great win there in the teams competition. How was it jumping in a teams competition, Catherine, for the first time? Um, it was pretty good. It was interesting. Um, but, yeah, it was fun and different, so... Now, you put a big jump out there early. Are you chasing 6.15, that elusive mark, for a World Junior qualifier in the new year? You're only 17? Yeah, I am, actually, yeah. Good luck with that. And Chris, 7.94 to open the season with here in Melbourne. Uh, 8.09, the elusive Commonwealth Games A qualifier. When do we expect to see you soar past that distance? Next comp. Chris, very good. Man, a few words. Con Chris, Catherine, congratulations. Well done, Gary Honey. 2017 Long Jump Challenge winners. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Another 79 second lap through 3K and 9.48, which gives us a target time of about 33.20. So that B qualifier still on the cards, plenty of running, obviously six and a half, 7K still to go. So they've got plenty of time to wind the pace up, work their way down into the low 33s. And I'm sure there's plenty of girls on track, Eloise in particular, and Jess that would love to, to get under that 33 minute mark with the A standard, well, the A standard at 32.15. Maybe a stretch. They're going to have to start winding it up from here if they want to hit that time. But uh, as I've mentioned, there's three girls in the field with either an A or a B at the moment, uh, and there's several others eyeing that off, and they're certainly on target for that B standard. Yeah, just for the record, uh, 9.58 for the three-kilometre uh, mark, and it's Maloney leading from uh, in second position, Ponton, then Trengrove on the outside, then Sasafian, who's just tucked away on the inside, conserving that energy. Hayes in fifth. And then it's Bricker check in sixth, who is an interesting player here, uh, Craig, uh, uh, an athlete who just basically wanted to forget about 2016. And I'd imagine after having not a great season, trying to pick herself up and regaining the love for the sport again, when you're a long distance runner, that can be tricky. Yeah, it's amazing what an event like the Commonwealth Games in your home country can do for motivation. So she is certainly on the improve and looking for a great solid run tonight. I'd imagine she may well be using this as a bit of a fitness test to see where she's at. Uh, and then she may look um, to be more specific in regards to what she wants to focus on as we move uh, down the back straight. Uh, the girls are starting to get a little bit bunched up, which to me means that they're getting a little bit antsy. The pace may have dropped a little bit. We had about an 81 second last lap, uh, which takes them out to that 33-25 mark. Um, some of the girls in this front pack, no doubt, wanting to keep that 33-13 in range. So they'll be starting to get into their running now. They'll be starting to produce a little bit of lactic. Should still be comfortable for the majority of that lead pack. Um, what are they? They're 12, nearly 13 minutes into their running. So they've got 20, uh, what, 17 minutes or so, 18, 19 minutes of strong running left to go. Maloney still at the front, though, just controlling the pace. Looks very comfortable. Uh, Maloney's PB, 32.53, she said in Geelong last year. Uh, at the Steigen meet, I believe. She's one of the three with the qualifier. She's actually got the B qualifier for the Com Games over this distance. Um, however, that race in Geelong was a mixed race, as I've just been, uh, it's just been pointed out. So she will certainly be looking to improve on that 32.53 tonight. And she's just controlling the pace from the front, nice and relaxed, and the rest of the girls st stuck in behind her, getting a nice draft. Yeah, Tim Crosby is like that little commentary guardian angel on your left shoulder, Craig Mottram, at the moment. As we return to the presentation area to award life membership of Athletics Victoria to Ian Jones, presented by Heather Ridley, the president of Athletics Victoria. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Ian. So with uh, just over 15 laps uh, to complete here in the uh, women's Zatapec, they were racing it to tight quarters uh, a lap ago, but uh, Ponton has now taken up the initiative here. Marnie Ponton from New South Wales, Trengove, who's been always up on the premises in second place, then Sasafian, the Canadian, in third, and also just starting to hover Salahern on the outside as they come into the straight. But uh, now it is uh, Ponton who leads the way, and if anything, they've just uh, opened up a little bit. I notice Wellings is out wider, three wide, 
around uh, Bricker Check. So just a little bit of movement there in that uh, last 500 metres, Craig. Yeah, a great, a great move there. Just opening up the field a little bit, just testing out who's prepared to go deep this early in the race and who's prepared, who wants to just, or not wants to, but who's starting to struggle a little bit at this point in the race. So a strong move at the front. Jess Trengove just lurking, lurking on the shoulder, waiting to make her move. I think she might sit another couple of laps and then she might get to the front and start to make it hard work. Um, where is Eloise? Eloise is in about seventh place just on the outside. She we watching Jess like a hawk at this point. Looks like she's pretty eager to get up towards the front as well. As the gaps start to open, the pace dropped down to about 76, 77 seconds. So there is a noticeable increase in the pace, which is why you're starting to see some of the gaps opening up. Yep, we've got basically seven runners in that uh, leading pack. And then it's about five metres back to Pompiani from the Australian club uh, sitting in eighth position and just starting to attach herself to that group. So we've almost got uh, a breakaway of eight uh, up the front coming into the straight. So Ponton leads, Trengove second the outside, and then it's the Canadian, Sasafian in third place. In fourth is Brikacek as they uh, run by us. Brikacek just staying away from the inside. Diver tucked away fifth the inside. Wellings in sixth position, Salahern next, and just attaching herself, Pompiani, to that group. So we've uh, almost uh, got another group now of about 11. Now that time for that 400 metres was a 78 as we head down to Nick. Thanks very much, Matt. Well, on the runway here, you've got Blake in the black here. Now they're currently in a total of 8 metres 30 in the combined pole vault, but the leaders at the moment, Max and Grace in the yellow. So the bar in the men's is at 5 metres, the bar at the girls is at four metres. At the moment, our leaders, though, are on 8.45 combined. That's Max and Grace in the yellow as Blake just misses his height there at five metres. Thanks, Nick. And there's some things starting to unravel here in the, in the women's Zatapec 10K. The one to watch, Maloney, just, just drifting off the back of that front group. She was our early leader for the first 10 laps or so. And she's, she's the one. That's the area that I actually really like to watch in these middle to long distance races. When the gaps start to open, obviously, Ponton's put the pace on up the front. And you'll start to see after the six or seven girls there that are going with her, you'll start to see that eighth, ninth and tenth position start to drop. And that's where the real interesting running is. Maloney made the effort, the hard effort in the last lap to close that gap. And he's starting to pay the price a little bit now. She will rally in the second half, obviously, with that marathon background. But this is a really tough moment for her. What she decides to do, does she try to push on or does she try to close that gap now? So Trengove goes to a clear lead from in second, Bricker check. And just following her into the race on the outside is Salahern. And Wellings went with her initially and then tucked in on the inside. So Wellings just holds her position there in third ahead of Salahern as they leave the straight and head towards the back section again. A little bit of jostling there on the outside. Uh, just to trying to hold her position along the inside was uh, Ponton. And there was definite contact between her and also the Canadian in Sasafian. So it's getting a bit willing out there, but Trengove leads from Bricker, Check, Wellings, Salahern, one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to ask my sidekick here, Tim Crosby, to get a split on the next 400 because I think we might be down around that 76, 77 second mark, which is the goal time for these girls. So look for that 33, 20 time to start to, to quicken up. It's the target time, 13, 13 being the, uh, 33, 13 rather, being the B standard. Jess has obviously got the instructions from her coach, Adam Diddick, to sit tight for the first 10 to 15 laps. And then once you get through halfway, start to ramp it up, which is exactly what she's doing. Notice Eloise Wellings moving up onto the rails in third place, looking very, very strong. I saw Eloise run in Noosa over 5K um, a month or so ago. She's in great shape. Um, actually did 70 minutes with her uh, the day after. It nearly killed me, but I'm here to tell the story. She's in great shape and looking fantastic. That one was a 75-second lap, Jess, a 75-second lap. So Adam will be on the back straight with a watch as well. Um, that is a huge increase in pace, and that will be starting to be felt by all the girls out on the track. So past halfway, Trengrove leads, heading to the back section from Brickacek and Wellings in third, Salahern in fourth, then Cesarefin, who now knows she's in a race in fifth place as they head down the back. So her PB, Trengrove, is 32.17 for 10,000 metres. She won the City to Surf in 2011, ran her first marathon in 2012, so the distance is in the legs. But this has been so far a really good run from... Emily uh, Brickacek in second place, and you can never discount Wellings in third with such an, a terrific resume. At this point in the race, they're coming up to receive 11 laps to go. They will start to hurt about now. If they're not already, they will be starting to go into 
uh, running through their energy systems. They'll be starting to feel that lactic start to build in the legs. This is a bit of a mental barrier, actually 10 laps to go. So this is a mental barrier that they will have spoken about with their coaches before the race. Obviously, get through the first 15 laps, head down, stay out of trouble. Once you get into single figures, that's when you start to get in the race. Uh, they're coming up to 10 to go now. Jess still in front. Brickacek in second, followed closely by Eloise. Those four at the front looking very strong, nice and relaxed. Jess is going to need to do some damage over the next couple of laps. Eloise very dangerous um, over the last three, three to four laps. In particular, if she's still there at the bell, she would certainly be my pick out of that group. So 76 seconds that uh, last uh, lap, we believe from uh, Tim about a 32.40 uh, pace, Craig. So they have really up the ante and uh, Trengrove is going to do it from the front. Brickacek second, Wellings third, Sullahern fourth. That is the pack of four now as this uh, women's Zatapec 10 is starting to uh, really take shape. And then it's a gap to Sasafian in fifth position. But we're really concentrating on this uh, quartet up in the lead at the moment. So it would appear we were on for a negative split. For, so for those in the crowd that don't understand what that means, that is the second half of the race quicker than the first half, which in this type of event is quite hard to do. So Jess, obviously, with her strength from the marathon background and obviously the work she's been doing over the past well, many, many years, she will be looking to do some real damage over the last eight or nine laps of this race and run the second half of the race quicker than the first half. Uh, which I tried to do many times in my career very unsuccessfully. So well done, Jess. She is doing a great job out in front. Eloise in third, looking fantastic. Brickacek just still on the, on the rails on the inside, just following Jess. She's actually looking very good. I'm, I'm excited to see her return, actually, and it's great to see her step up and have a go over the 10K. Diver in sixth position as they uh, run Pius here. Uh, Craig Ponton in the next place. And then it's Pompiani, who was attached to that leading group uh, early, has dropped away. Then Reed just passing the line now. And uh, Maloney is uh, behind her with also Gemma Maney from Frankston Athletic. So down the back section, Jessica Trengrove showing the way. Jewel Olympian, 2012 London, 2016 in Rio. Bronze medalist in the marathon at the Glasgow Commonwealth Games in 2014. As I mentioned earlier, her first marathon was in 2012. With uh, Bricka Czech, who's looking to dispel that uh, horror 2016. She's actually a psychologist away from the track, so that should help. There may well be a bit of self-talk out there from Bricka Chick, I would imagine. I know when I've run a 25-lap 10K race, I'd be talking to myself quite a lot about now. Uh, how I find a way out of the stadium was more the thing going through my mind. Especially if lasagna was on the table, this, Craig. This is very true. Uh, as they go through eight laps to go... It was a 77, that 77. lap. 77. So Jess is still pouring the pace on, and she's going to need to maintain that, I would suggest, for another couple of laps to really start to test the three behind her. Sisyphean's an interesting one. This is her first 10K. I don't know if that's been mentioned yet, but we really more renowned for her 5K. She's got a PB over 5K of uh, 15.08, which she did earlier this year at Houston, which is a great meet in Belgium. I've run there a few times myself. They get perfect conditions, so this might be a little bit foreign to her. Uh, obviously, the, the meets when you get over into Europe, you have great weather, great conditions, and ideal for running fast. So her PB of 15.08 would indicate that she would be finding this pace relatively comfortable. It's more the distance that she's going to find hard as she comes up to that 7 and 8K mark now, getting into some very unknown territory. Yeah, you're quite right, uh, Craig. This is not her usual territory. She's the national champion at 5,000 metres. And Jess starting to surge again, but Sisyphean just making a run up on the outside, moving up onto the shoulder of Jess. And Salahern on the outside. Oh, Salahern, sorry, rather. Should put my glasses on. But Jess is starting to surge. I noticed there as she came past the water jump, she just upped the pace, looking to maintain high intensity to try and run the, the speed out of the three girls behind her. 77 again. And uh, that's a 77-lap, and I note that Wellings is quite awake to that as well. Just happy to sit second to the shoulder of uh, Salahern. And a bricker check uh, in fourth place. Eloise won't do much tonight other than try and win the race, I would imagine. She'll just sit tight, do as little as possible, be invisible, and wait till the very end before she makes her move. It is a national title, so there is a fair bit on the line, obviously already having the A standard. She doesn't need to do much more than, than win the race herself um, to be considered very highly for selection for the upcoming Commonwealth Games. She's been Australia's dominant middle to long distance female runner for the last... Well, 10 plus years. I remember travelling with Eloise many, many, many years ago 
Um, and she's a, a true credit to effort and dedication, and that is what is the sport of middle and long distance running. She's been around a very long time, um, and I would imagine very excited about the upcoming Com Games uh, and how she's going to perform there in front of a home crowd on the Gold Coast. So just a little bit of traffic to negotiate here. Sarah Waters and also Bridie uh, Delaney. And uh, Trengove uh, safely passed uh, those two runners with Salahern in second, Wellings in third, and if anything, Brickercheck might just be losing touch for those first three as they come past. And we're starting to get down to the nitty-gritty here with uh, six laps to go, a 78-second uh, lap there. 78 seconds, so... It is Trengove leading from Sullahern and Wellings, and it looks as though that trifecta will fight out the Zatapec 10 for the women's. As the three move down the back straight into the breeze again, it might actually be a tail where he's out there now. The wind is moving around a little bit. Brickercheck, great run from her. It's not over yet for her. She's got five laps coming up to five laps, or five and a half laps to go now, but she'll be just starting to find out what it feels like to go above 20 laps into a 10k, which is very, very tough, but great running from her, and she's just got to head down and continue to plug away for the next five laps. Maloney, who was right up there at uh, the start, has uh, dropped away, so uh, a few things, including a uh, chance to get to the Com Games drifting away. Well, as that lead group make their way up, they've got five to go. So two kilometres left to run. Two kilometres left to run. Jess still punching out 77, 76 to 78 second laps here with two to go. 26, 16 with two kilometres to go. Tim's about to do the data and give me the 76 second lap, which is outstanding running from Jess. She's been a metronome, just plugging away at that 75 to 77 second lap pace. Again, Eloise just sitting in third place, doing absolutely nothing. Looks very good at the moment, nice and relaxed. Celia still sitting in second again on the shoulder of Tress, also looking on the shoulder of Jess, rather also looking very, very strong. Jess continually surging a little bit down the back straight there. She's picking her moment. She would have been out there long enough now to know where the wind is and she'll be finding those tougher spots on the track to really test out the two girls behind her and see whether or not or how much they really want this 10K title. So for the uninitiated, uh, as we get towards the end of 10,000 metres with three runners, uh, really just trying to show their hand at the end. What are the signs of uh, tiredness that we're looking for? Oh, the shoulders will start to creep up a little bit. You can tell a lot from looking at the face as well. It's hard from up here to actually see how, how Jess is, is looking in her face, but she's blushing a little bit. Uh, Eloise looks very strong. She's just covering the moves nicely. Celia also covering the moves nicely, just nice and relaxed. Landing on the forefoot, so the front half of the feet, as Eloise you see there, is doing beautifully. She's a great track runner. Jess, your more traditional marathon runner, sits down a little bit lower. Uh, but another 76-second lap, and this is the pure strength that comes out of someone like a Jess Trengove, who has done multiple marathons, represent, represented Australia many, many times as they move their way around some lap traffic. She's going to continue to use that as an asset. She's going to continue to surge as they go around the turns around some of the outside athletes. And we're... Okay. We're just about to throw down to Tamsin, who is trackside. Over to you, Tamsin. i got to say, Jess Trangrove looks really relaxed out there in, in, in the lead. You were talking about facial expressions, and she looks very calm, cool and collected. Um, Celia is her typical, usual, feisty sort of face, facial expressions, and she's, um, she's hanging in there quite tough. And Eloise, well, you can never write her off. Thank you, Tamsin. Some great insight from down on a track side. We can't see from up here. We've got the binoculars, but we've decided not to use them. Um, as they make their way up, they've got four, three to go, I think they're going to come up to now. So they are into coming up to the final K, which over the 5 and 10K distance, that's where the race is really starting to work. As Celia makes a move, Jess got the job at hand here just to continue to mark that move. Eloise again just moving closely. You notice she just drifts up beautifully on the back of Jess there. As they hit three to go, she's just doing as little as possible, waiting for the last minute. So that's been a, a real statement made by Sulla Hearn there from New South Wales, moving up to Trengove and uh, it's going to say, well, if you're going to try and beat us, you're going to have to come past me. And With interestingly, in third. interestingly, as they go past the 1500, Sullivan's putting the move on. Jess following. Eloise starting to drift back a little bit. And this is that old elastic band that they talk about in middle and long distance running. At what point is it going to break? For mine, that is opening up just a little too much with the pay to go. 
Yeah, so Salahern and Trengove, they pair off now in what's going to be an intriguing battle in the last couple of laps. Salahern really putting some elbow grease into it now, and Wellings just couldn't ping down the back, just couldn't quite stretch with them, and now it appears we're down to two in the gruelling final stages of the Zatopec 10 for women. And this is going to be very, very interesting. We've got a... A lady who's in her first ever 10,000 metre run race, so she's in unknown territory. No, she's done one before. Oh, she's done one, sorry, as Tim corrects me. So into her second 10,000 metre race as they come up to two to go, and Jess has done multiple. In fact, she does this four times over and over without a break. So she is in comfortable territory here, and I would imagine she's going to sit tight on the shoulder there and wait for that bell before she makes a move. And are we going to see a marathoner outkick a track runner here for the 10K national title at the Zatopec? Trengove, a PB, remember, of 32.17 for the 10,000 metres, a City to Surf winner. So just get past a little bit of traffic heading towards the back, which can always be precarious when you're getting tired. And uh, the leader here is Sulla Hearn, who just gets A for grittiness. She has uh, really put it out on the line. You get the impression she's leaving everything out there. Just getting past that traffic is uh, Trengove, and she is not done with after basically doing the work as we head in towards the final two laps. And this is where the true grit of the marathon runner comes out. Both of these women have run great marathons past in the past historically. Uh, Celia winning Melbourne in 2.29. Jess obviously running 2.28 in Mel Melbourne a year or so ago, just over a year or so ago. They make their way up into the 500 metres to go. And traditionally for me, this is about where I'd start to make my move. So let's see which one of these two distance athletes, great distance athletes, wants the national title more. Get behind them, ladies and gentlemen. We've got one lap to go in the Zatopec. So it is Salahern, Celia Salahern, leading from in second place, Trengove, who did a terrific job in the lead, but three laps earlier, Salahern has decided to really put the foot down. And now with 300 metres to go, Salahern digs in. You can see the lean. She's just going for everything. Trengove still looks to be pretty comfortable. Only about four metres off the leader. Can Salahern get away down the back from Trengove? She's putting everything into it now. 250 metres to go. Salahern leads and has got about eight or nine metres now on Trengove. Can she respond? At this stage, I don't think she can respond. So a little bit of traffic here at the 200 metres to negotiate. Salahern does that and she looks like she's absolutely powering coming towards the turn here in the Zatopec 10,000 for women. This has been a terrific display from Celia Salahern. Her second 10,000 metres has got away from Trengove who can't answer and she will win it, the Zatopec 10. A terrific performance from New South Wales, ladies and gentlemen. Celia Salahern storming to the line, attacking the line and sees out the 10,000 metres in fine style. 32-31 as Jess makes her way over the finish line and about 32-35, followed closely by Eloise in third place. A great run from all of the three ladies up the front. They battled it out from the get-go. They split the field up. Jess put the pressure on through halfway, broke them up, and some great running as Eloise puts her hands on her knees. She's had a tough night, worked very hard. And we've got Brickacek coming up into the home straight as well to take out fourth. Now, this and is Brickacek in fourth and Diver behind her, trying to hunt her down in fourth place. So, Wellings completed the course in third. This is fourth, ladies and gentlemen, coming down. Emily Brickacek, she'd be delighted with this. The B standard at 32, 33, 13, 33, 14 for Brickacek. She's just going to miss that B as Diver comes over the line. 33, 18, a great run from her. Fantastic running from all girls out on the track. Interestingly, the, the top three or top four places, or four rather out of those top five places, marathon athletes, which is fantastic to see depth in that event for us here in Australia with the upcoming Com Games and obviously our...